Webull and M1 Finance are two of the best investing apps out there for anyone who wants more features than an app like Robinhood, a better ability to manage your portfolio, or just that sweet, sweet sign-up bonus. Well, I have been using both of these apps for over a year at this point, so we're going to be putting them head-to-head -to, -head to see which is the better investing app overall. Hey everyone, and welcome to FinTech. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Webull and M1 Finance by three different categories. Their portfolio management capabilities, their sign-up bonuses, and their overall features and ease of use. By the end of this video, you should have a clear understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of each app, and hopefully you'll know which app is better for you. So hit the like button if you want, and let's dive right into comparing the apps. So first off, let's just do a brief overview of what each app looks like, starting with Webull. Now, Webull has basically all the same functionality that you would expect from any other investing app like Robinhood, including the ability to trade options, cryptos, and stocks. Two of Webull's strong points are the amount of data that they provide you in actually buying and selling stocks, as well as the amount of information they provide for basic research into either a stock or the market in general. They also have an active investment community that you can contribute to and consume from, where you can talk about news, your portfolio, or even take courses on how to invest. Now, we'll go into more detail on those those features later, but next let's take a look at M1 Finance. M1 Finance really puts a focus on maintaining a balanced portfolio. You can pre-select a list of stocks to put into your investment portfolio pie, and then M1 Finance will automatically rebalance that pie for you to make sure that your allocations stay relatively the same. They also have a much simpler and cleaner UI when compared to Webull, while still offering you much of the same features, including the ability to borrow on margin or research new stocks. So that's just a quick overview of what the two apps look like, and if you already kind of have an idea in your head about which one you'd like to use more, maybe hold on to that for a second. Because let's first compare each of the features in the apps to see which one comes out ahead. So the first feature here is obviously the stock buying and selling experience. So when you open the app, you can go ahead and search for a stock right away. So let's do Cloudflare. And in here, you can see a ton of information on the stock, including its chart and the different order and sales data. You can see the order flow distribution, as well as any large scales in the last few days. And then if I click trade at the bottom of the screen, I have all the options that you would expect, including the ability to buy or sell this stock, change the type of order that I want to place for it, as well as decide my trading hours, so either regular or extended hours. But if this screen layout is a little bit too intimidating for you, you can always switch to big button mode, which is going to be a little bit more streamlined, but in my opinion, it's a pretty poor overall user experience. But comparing that app to M1 Finance, things could not be more different. So with M1 Finance, the whole idea of buying and selling stocks is really taken out of your hands and automated. So rather than buying and selling specific positions, I can construct an investment pie which will automatically rebalance at certain periods. This makes it a lot easier than having to manually manage your different portfolio balances, but it also takes away some of the control that you might have on an app like Webull because you don't have the ability to buy option trades on this app. Additionally, one thing that they kind of hide behind the fact that they're balancing automatically is the fact that they only let you make trades during certain trading windows. This is a huge limitation for any active investor, and it's really a limitation that isn't present on any other investing app out there, including Webull. One other point that Webull has on top of M1 Finance is that Webull has the ability for you to invest in cryptos, while M1 Finance does not. The next feature is the ability to do market research. After all, what's the point of being able to buy and sell stocks if you don't know what stocks you're going to buy? Now, this is one area where Webull really shines. So if I go to the markets tab here, I can view different coverage on the market levels in general in areas like the United States, globally, in Hong Kong specifically. And if I scroll down, there's a ton of different data on all these different markets. In addition to just looking at stocks based on their overall markets, so for example, the top gainers or losers in this particular market, you can also look at pre-created lists of stocks on the platform. So for example, I can go to top gainers here, and here's a list of all the top gainers recently in the market. Finally, I can also look into individual stocks and if I go into these there is so much data available on these stocks so I can see the chart and if I just scroll through here I can see news on the stock I can see different comments from different users on this company including the stock sentiment I can see different analyses of the stock as well as just a company overview in general so whether you're interested in doing a fundamental analysis of the company based on their earnings which is what I usually do or even if you're interested in doing some kind of technical analysis based on their chart which I call the horoscopes of stock investing you you can do either one of those options in Weeble. 
valuable. But turning now to M1 Finance, while they don't offer quite the same amount of information that Webull does, there's something to be said about streamlining some of that information and making it a little bit easier to read. So in M1 Finance, there's a whole tab specifically for research. And this again kind of gives you some high level overviews of different markets, but these are mostly focused in the US as well as different news stories on their markets. Additionally, if I search up a specific stock, so let's look up Cloudflare, for example, this is going to have a much more simple and streamlined UI without quite as much data as Webull. So I can see different news stories on the stock, I can see its different price history over different ranges, and I can see an overall profile of the stock. But I'm not getting information on, for example, what the last trades were or what kind of the options chain is. And like with Webull, if you wanna see the chart, you can just tap that in the upper right and a chart will show up for you too. One other feature that M1 Finance has for research is the ability to look at expert-made pre-made pies. So in addition to looking for individual stocks, let's say I wanted to look up some kind of expert pie. I can see one for general investing, planning for retirement, responsible investing, income earners, Let's say I wanted to look at responsible investing. If I open this up, I can see how well this particular pie has performed and see what it is actually made up of. So in this case, it looks like mostly ETFs. So the next thing we need to look up is the ability to buy on margin. Now, both of the stocks offer the ability to buy on margin, but they offer vastly different experiences. So with Webull, for example, you could be paying anywhere from seven to 4% interest, depending how much money you are actually borrowing at one time. With M1 Finance, on the other hand, you're gonna be paying a much lower margin interest rate of only 3.5%, and that drops all the way down to 2% if you're paying for M1 Plus, which is their subscription service. And we'll talk about that service a little bit more later on. The last major feature that both of these apps share is the ability to customize the user experience. So with Webull, for example, you can change between different themes if you would prefer a darker theme or a brighter theme. And you can also do things like change what your stock charts look like. Are they red or are they green? How much information is displayed in different screens? Obviously on the trading screen earlier, you can change from smaller buttons to bigger buttons. M1 Finance, on the other hand, is a little bit more limited in their customization. In fact, really the only customization you have in M1 Finance is the ability to switch between dark mode and light mode. Also kind of lumped in with this customization feature, Webull has the ability for you to create custom stock alerts. So for example, with Cloudflare here, I can have it alert me automatically when the price is above or below a certain amount, or if there's some other kind of change or news event that I wanna track, which is a lot more customization than you're gonna get in M1 Finance. But that then leads us into the features which are unique to each individual app. And honestly, this may be the area where there's the most differentiation overall. So with Webull, for example, we have this community section in the app. On here, you have this stream section, which is kind of like Twitter for stocks, where people can post their different stock ideas or even just memes, and you can follow different people. So right now I'm following Webull News. In here, you can also get news on a bunch of different stocks, cryptos, things like that. And within this community tab, you also have access to free courses on investing. So let's say I wanted to learn more about investing basics. I can tap on that course right here and it brings up all these different lessons that I can go through to learn more about investing. The last nice part of this community section is you can also look up WeFolios and see different portfolios that people have put and made public on Webull or that are made by Webull themselves. So for example, there's a meme folio right here. And then here we can see how this meme portfolio has performed over time and see what their largest positions are. So this portfolio is exclusively GameStop and AMC. But not to be outdone, M1 Finance also has a pretty major feature which Webull is lacking and that is their M1 Spend account. Now, M1 Spend is basically a checking account that you can link into your investing account, so cash management. This account will actually pay you interest for keeping your money there, which is something that Webull does not do, and they have options to let you link a debit card to this and spend directly out of the account. They're also now launching an owner rewards card where let's say you're invested in Apple. If you go out and use that credit card on Apple products, you make a certain percentage back, as high as 10% on certain companies. This is kind of a cool concept because it lets you buy products and get rewarded for actually owning some portion of that company. Now the downside with this credit card is it's gonna cost you $95 annually unless you're an M1 Plus member. But then Webull again in response to that has another feature which M1 Finance is lacking. So within Webull you can pay extra for advanced quotes. 
which for example, for this level two advanced NASDAQ total view, will let you basically see the last 30 best bids and offers on each individual stock. And you can pay for this for various different exchanges. Now this is obviously a more advanced feature that only really traders would be using. But again, it's something that Webull has that M1 Finance absolutely does not. But then to finish up with M1 Finance, they also offer the M1 Plus account, which gives you certain features that actually extend the app even more than they currently have it. M1 Plus is a paid subscription, which is gonna cost you $125 a year, but you get certain benefits, including 1% back on your checking account, 1% cash back on the debit card that you can link to to that checking account, lower margin interest rates, like I mentioned earlier, so you'll only pay 2% interest on your margin, and you'll get two different trading windows, both in the morning and the afternoon to sell stocks. Now, the fact that they're kind of trying to upsell you on the ability to not just trade in one trading window, but to lock you into one of two trading windows, it's kind of a weird upsell in my opinion, but it is better than only being able to trade in the afternoon. I think the coolest actual new feature you get with M1 Plus is the ability to set up smart transfers. These smart transfers follow if-then rules. So for example, when money hits my checking account, I can say if there's a certain amount hitting this account, maybe move it into my checking account in M1 Finance and invest a certain amount into Apple. This would be a dream for anybody whose goal is to basically automate their investing as much as possible. So just from that initial look at the features, we can kind of see that Webull has the edge in terms of the number of advanced features that they'll offer to traders or advanced investors. While M1 Finance goes for a less is more approach where they offer a much cleaner, simpler UI and the ability to automate a lot of your investments. But we're not done with our comparison quite yet. Let's now look at what the experience is actually like managing your portfolio with each app. So in terms of the actual experience in managing your portfolio, that means tracking how your performance is in your stocks, as well as making adjustments to your investments, how do the two different apps compare? Well, let's just first get the obvious out of the way and look at M1 Finance which has one of the best user experiences in terms of portfolio management that I've ever seen. It's super easy to both view your entire portfolio at a glance and see how well it's performing, as well as dive into the specific positions to see how those are performing as well. But that view is only a portion of overall portfolio management. Webull has more of a traditional investing app approach to managing your portfolio. You can construct watch lists of stocks you might like to invest in, and then you can view your existing positions just in a regular table format and then dive into individual positions that way. So there's nothing too remarkable there, although one thing that Webull does have is a really nice breakdown of your profit and loss. So if I move off of this asset screen and onto the P&L tab here, I can see how my portfolio has been performing over the last week, and I can see all this different data on different profit and loss metrics that I might like to track. So I can see my total profit and loss, any dividends that I have, any margin interest, as well as any fees that might be affecting me, let's say I'm investing in a mutual fund. Now M1 Finance's equivalent to that P&L is not quite as detailed, but it still has a certain amount of information. You can see the number of holdings, what my expenses are, as well as what my dividend yield is. And then under targets, I can see what my allocation should be in each stock. It's simple for sure, but for somebody who doesn't use options or margin interest, the simplicity is kind of a benefit, I would say, for me. The other big benefit for managing your portfolio with M1 Finance is the ability to look at existing expert pies and potentially copy them in terms of your own investments or to construct your own pies. So for example, I have my portfolio here, but I could also construct a different pie at the same time with completely different stocks to just track in addition to my own. But even though that is a really nice feature and it seems like it would be completely specific to M1 Finance, you can never really count Webull out because they actually have a feature that's fairly similar to this called their WeFolios. And if I just open up one of these portfolios here, if I scroll down a little bit, there's this stock allocation section. This stock allocation chart looks exactly like the chart from M1 Finance. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they took some design inspiration from that other app. So in terms of the overall experience for portfolio management, it's really more of a question of personal preference. For example, this stock allocation chart doesn't work quite as well as the M1 does, but it has all technically the same information. So if you're very much a numbers person, you might go with Webull versus if you're a UI person, M1 Finance might be the way to go. But now we've gone through the different features, we've gone through portfolio management. The last thing we need to look at with both of these apps is their relative signup bonuses. So right now, M1 Finance is paying out a much higher signup bonus. If you sign up for M1 Finance today and deposit $100 into your account, they will give you $50 back to invest into your account within seven to 14 days, as long as you keep the money there for a little while. Webull, on the other hand, is offering you two free stocks when you deposit five dollars or more and those two free stocks are valued anywhere from
from $12 to $1,400. So I guess technically Webull is a better ROI in that you can put in $5 and get at least $12 out, but M1 Finance is going to give you more guaranteed money because you're guaranteed getting $50 if you put $100 in. And I'll definitely have links in my description for both of those offers if you want to use them. But in addition to those sign-up bonuses, you'll also get free subscriptions on both apps. So with M1 Finance, you'll usually get one free year of M1 Plus, which I talked about the benefits of earlier. And with Webull, you'll usually get around three to four months of a level two NASDAQ subscription. So if you wanna really get into day trading, there you go. So overall, I think it's pretty clear. These two apps are not aimed at the same audience. If you're a technical trader who wants to get really into advanced trading and trading options, you're gonna use Webull. But if you're a more traditional investor who really just wants to maintain a balanced portfolio with an easy to use UI, M1 Finance is probably gonna be better for you. I know it might feel like a cop-out answer, but honestly, these two apps are built for fundamentally different audiences. Now, everything that you do in M1 Finance, you could probably find out how to do in Webull as well, but if you want to invest in the way that M1 Finance is built for, just use M1 Finance. And if you want to trade options or be a more advanced investor and look at all the different technical analysis, you're probably going to go with Webull. Now, for me personally, I'm actually a pretty light user investing apps. I probably only open them once every several weeks. Now, if I was opening Webull every day, I would probably get used to it and appreciate all the extra information. But because I'm such a light user, M1 Finance fits me a little bit better just because it's cleaner and easier to use. So I would give that app a slight edge for me personally. But let me know if you're Team Webull or Team M1 Finance in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.